in following Deputy Carity's questioning, were you the Chief Financial Officer, Mr Mulvaney, in that time, 2011-2012? Was that yourself? Uh, no. No. Definitely, I was okay. 2013, I think, 14. Okay. Um, and another follow-on was we gave a week to the department to gather documentation information in preparation for a doll debate on Thursday next week, or sorry, someday next week to be decided today by the business committee. So is there any of your team here who have been involved in providing that so-called gathering information or documentation? Um, I don't know. Colleagues can answer for themselves. I don't. Has anybody I'm been quite sure. part to providing documentation, historic documentation? Anybody here? Nobody's been asked. That's grand. I'm not going to discuss that with you today because I firmly believe we'll get that information and we'll discuss it in the Dáil next week. I want to concentrate on the disability services and I could probably do the whole meeting on my own based on how poor the performance is, to be honest. Um, I'm going to start with... Maybe, Ms. Comiskey, you might tell me about the CDNT and why the system is such a failure. Well, in relation to the CDNT's deputy, um, there are issues to do with, um, and I think it's probably been noted before. Would you HSC. move in, please? I'm oh, sorry, sorry. find oh. difficult. Can you hear me better yes. now? Okay. Um, yes, with relation to your question, with relation to the CDNT's. So the department acknowledges there are challenges in the children's disability services. Um, and I suppose just going back to why the CDNTs were actually um, set up the way they were. Oh no, oh no, we know why. The question I'm asking now, I have very little time and I'm going to be try to be cordial. So if I get the answers, I'll be cordial. If I don't get the answers, I'll be like I always am. So what I'm asking on behalf of the children and their families, who aren't getting services. And let me give you one instance. I have an eight-year-old child who is physically bigger than his mother and his siblings, who constantly beats his mother to the point of where she's quite afraid that her life and her other children's life are in jeopardy. It's the terminology used by Tusla is that there is four lives being lived as one. In other words, nobody else gets to do anything because all the focus is on this child. That family can't get respite. They can't get any, so we have all of the stakeholder agencies involved. Now, and this is just one that I'm going to reference, okay? So I'm asking you, why is it in such disarray? We set up CDNT for all the right reasons. What we haven't been able to do is staff the model. So is it a resourcing issue? That's a binary question. Is it money? It's not funding. It's not money. Okay. Uh, funding has been provided for, right. I think, in excess of 600 posts since 2019. Right. The problem is, and I'm sure my HSE colleagues can speak to this in detail, it's the challenges around recruitment and retention, okay. which have caused significant issues with the CDNTs. What's um, the governance structure for CDNT, the clinical structure, we'll say, versus primary care. What's the difference? Well, in terms of the governance structure for the CDNTs, I'm going to have to hand you to my HSE colleagues on okay. that, if that's okay, because they are on the operational As side. Whoever Is has that, okay? that answer, please. Um, yeah, firstly, clearly the HSE takes responsibility because we, we, we deliver children's disability services. The, the children's disability networks work very well in some places, and in some cases, as you said, families, children are not getting the service that they need or that we would like to provide. So that, that's Could accepted. Could you tell me where it's working well, Mr Mulvaney? Which C where? My, my colleagues will give you examples of where CDNTs have been there for some years and are effective. Well, um, now you made the statement, you said they're working well. Will you just give me an example? I, I, let, I let my colleagues give that detail, Deputy, if I can, because I've met some of the CDNTs and that's, that's the information that you get. But just, just, just in terms of the background, we know, um, and as part of the questions the committee asked, that the children's disability services, like disability services, about 20% of them are provided directly by the HSE. The other 80% are provided. Legal governance was the question. Agreed, Deputy. Please. The rest are provided by voluntary agencies. So part of the answer to your question as to why are we in such difficulty is we are seeking to get a lot of partner agencies to make a substantial change in a relatively short period of time, as can well I, as having resourcing issues. Can I ask you to answer the issues. question? I've asked what the clinical governance structure of CDNT is versus primary care. Are they the same? No, they're not. They're not the same. 
yourself or Yvonne? Yeah, just on my last my colleague Yvonne to, to go through. The, there's 91 teams throughout the country, Deputy, and, and most of them have significant staffing def deficits. There are challenges there around it. So would that mean, Mr McCallion, they're not working that way? No, what I'm saying, Deputy, is clearly if they're under-resourced in terms of where they should be relative to the numbers of people that we want in the teams, we're not at the level, we're a long way from the level we want to be at. So one of the areas in terms of progressing disabilities, it was in, I think, the report we provided to the committee, is trying to set out a roadmap over the next few years about how we can try and address some of those recruitment difficulties. Next few years. And, and the reason I say that, you won't resolve the issue in terms of recruitment straight away. There's very significant challenges in terms of the numbers of people coming out of our colleges for some of the therapies versus the numbers that we need. So we are looking at all measures to try and incentivise people to work in those services and also in relation to international recruitment. Just on your specific question on Clinton governance, I might ask Yvonne just maybe to explain how that works in a community setting. There's a head of disability service and there's a structure under that. Yeah, thanks, Deputy. So, um, yeah, the, the children's disability network teams are governed uh, under the children's disability network manager. And depending on the geography that's in, because as my colleagues have said, it's jointly provided by the Section 38, 39s and HSE. So the teams may be, you know, made up differently in that in terms of the where the uh, person is employed. But the governance structure is is standard. So it's led by the children's disability network teams. We're at about six, six about two thirds of the um, uh, teams posts are filled. That varies across the country. I'm very aware, um, Deputy. So, that uh, sorry, Yvonne, I'm just confused. Am I? Does the CDNT have a clinical governance structure? Yes, it does. Yeah. Is sure. it? What's the difference between that governance structure and the primary care? Because it doesn't appear we have a problem in primary care. As a matter of fact, primary care seems to be the only part of all of these services that's working. How many staff left the CDNT pre-Christmas? Um, I don't know the number. Well, in CHO five in one, in one facility, seven walked out. I'm informed. So, uh, some. Um, Are you aware of that? Would you say, like, if I'm hearing from yeah. staff that we have to engage with, or that, that mm -hmm. it's in crisis, is yeah. that worrying for you? Fair, no, very concerning. For very all concerning. Of us. Well, and imagine how it feels for the mother of the eight-year-old who can't get into the car for fear of that child yeah. choking her, and she can't bring him to respite herself yeah. because, and she can't bring anybody else. She can't let anybody else because he's not restrainable by normal, so as we'll say, family people. Can I say, deputy, that, and I know that you have you have close engagement with um, our colleagues in in uh, CHO five in your area on specific cases. Um, we would the close the engagement is that I have to concern. constantly harass the staff to get the services that don't exist because the staff don't exist to provide them. So there is, there is, so, and that that governance, uh, clinical governance, does uh, take on the responsibility of of uh, pr clinical prioritisation and in uh, the acknowledged gap that there is on the available resources. So why to are they and wanting? Has why are staff moving challenge. from CDNT in back to primary care? Well, so first of all, we have we also have the, the uh, health and social care professionals and the uh, gap in health and social care professionals across the whole of the HSE, across mental health, across primary <coughs> care, and across disability. Um, the uh, promotional posts that have uh, been uh, um, de developed as a result of the enhancing community <coughs> care and primary care um, services have meant that our own people. Because right, of their, so look, their, because of their own experience I, I really, and career progression. I have progression. two minutes and I haven't got and an the answer. Only thing, do we have a head of discipline? Do we have a head of discipline? Excuse me, There are 29,000 children. Chair, there are 29,000 children provided without, a service. Without, without 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 a witness just to finish. I only want to finish by letting the deputies know that there are 29,000 children in receipt of services from a very dedicated professional group of professionals. And there's about 20,000 who don't get have and the, how many don't have the services? Well, how many don't? Give me that figure. So, so I'm, I'm uh, the documents that we've provided shows the type of areas Rolled like off your tongue, and 29,000 children in service. Well, how many on, aren't on, on, because on. they can't access them? How okay. many? So, so some of that 29,000 may not be getting the full range of services that they need. So, uh, the number of, of do we have a head much of harder to uh, in the clinic? Do here. we? Is yes. there a head of discipline? There is a clinical governance in is the Is there a the head teams. of discipline in the CDNT? Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's terrified. Yeah. 
No, it's not clarified. Deputy, just in terms of their heads of discipline in each of the CHOs that would provide the clinical governance, as Ivana said, for Are they for the primary care or are they for no. CDNT? So in some cases, the clinical governance is provided across a range of services. Your point in terms of primary care is a fair one in that what we're seeing is through the investment in primary care, there's over 2,000 posts gone in in recent years into our enhanced community care and primary care programme, and there's no question that is impacting on our other services like disabilities. And if there's no question so, that it's impacting, what are you doing about it? So part of the, the roadmap that we've set out, Deputy, is to look at international recruitment to try and grow the numbers. We can't grow the numbers overnight that are coming through our colleges. We would have addressed this in the Joint Health Committee recently in terms of the challenges, and the Department have been working with Department of Higher Education to try and ensure we train more people in the areas of therapies like speech and language That's OT and a physio. a long-term perspective. And I'm asking you, Mr McCallion, what are we doing for the children and the families today? I mean, we have good staff in the HSE who are doing fantastic work, but are under, listen, these are the words, demoralised, fatigued, saddened, undervalued, voting with their feet. The good staff that are left are going to leave. Does that concern you? Of course, Dep Does Deputy. Does it concern everybody here? So, could I just say, Deputy, one of the reasons that we're trying to put, we've put that roadmap together is to try and give staff and families some sense of the direction. If you just Mr. Finish, McCallion, if, let if me I could just, finish, let me just read a sentence here where we talk. Your flowery De language. It's no, a twenty-page document, and it's wonderful, but it means absolutely could I respond nothing. Though? The HSE works in partnership with organisations. The pay scale. Is it the same? Is the, is the Section 39 the same pay scale as your own, the HSE staff? So no, is the straight answer no, to that. No, 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 no. Just to be clear, we so are... So you think, you think well, can then I answer that you're going deputy? to recruit? Do you th would you agree so it would be difficult I, 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 to recruit under those if circumstances? If I can make a comment, Deputy... And to retain... I, I actually agree with you, Deputy. OK, so um, we agree the fact that Section 39s are not able to pay their staff at the same level or similar to the same level as Section 38 organisations and indeed ourselves. And is, given that 80% of your challenge. service is provided in that sector, how do you propose that that sector is going to be able to stand up to that? So w what we're saying, Deputy, is that is a very significant issue. We have called that issue out, including I have called that issue out, including in these committees. So there is a, a WRC hearing coming up shortly, and the HSE will be represented at that. These are not our employees. However, because of the service impact, we see this as a very important issue to be resolved. The it's referred to as the pay parity issue for the Section 39. We're on a second now. We're on a second. Just we're going to allow you to be part of any solution that can be found for I'll that. I'll come back in. Because, as I said, I could and do the, the meeting. The WRC hearing has got to do with Section 39s. Right. Okay. Exactly. Definitely. Definitely.